All right, so this move block, I'm paranoid and I want to test this because, you know, finding out if code wor doesn't work immediately is very important to me. So I'm actually going to create an object which is I'm going to call setup. This guy is going to run the very beginning stuff. So eventually he'll set up my score, my lives, start alarms running to, for timing, all that kind of stuff. So when the game starts, I want to call this create shape script. Under the control tab, the one with the little green arrow, the one in the middle here, is the one that calls that. So if, you, if that's the only thing you're going to do, you do the execute script and then choose the one that you want. I'm going to show you another way in a little bit, but let's start with that. Now if I try this and I don't put setup in the room, it will never run that code, so I should throw setup in the room. Just an invisible controller, he just runs that one piece of code. Look, it's a block. Okay, so that seems to work. That's good. So let me go back into create shape and try putting in some other ones. So the one directly to the right of that means I'm going to be adding 32 to my x position because my sprite is 32 by 32. So 128 plus 32 is 160, according to my mental math. Oh, you know what just happened? That was very fortunate. I happened to pick shape 0 on that first random number. Uh, that's going to happen only one out of seven times. So for testing, I'm going to put in another thing right afterwards where I just say, all right, you're shape 0, at least until I decide that you need to be something else. Otherwise, I'm going to have to run my game you know, a whole bunch of times to see if that worked or not. There we go. That looks right to me. What else do I need? So I need to now go down from my original one. So 128, 32. And I'm Feeling pretty safe about this, so I think 160.32 will be the other one. All right. All right, so it turns out that for rotations, I'm actually going to need to keep track of each of these shapes individually, as exciting as that is. So I'm actually going to need to somehow hold on to the ID number of this particular shape. So if you look at instance create in the help file, instance create, it's down towards the bottom of this, do, 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 do. instance create. It creates an instance of the object at position x, y. The function returns the ID of this new object. Well, that's interesting. So it actually gives you back which ID number was used to create this guy. So if you've never seen this before, I'm going to run this in the debugger real quick, the red arrow right next to the green one. If I hover my mouse over the shapes, if you look over here at mouse ID, it tells you the ID number. And in fact, you can actually use that in your game to refer to that particular object. So if I say 100046.x, that actually is referring to that particular object's x position. We're actually going to use variables to store these so that I can refer to block 1, block 2, 3, 4, so on, by its ID number. So, hey, setup. I need to do more than just create a shape. So I'm actually going to 
delete this real quick and put in a regular script. From a regular script variable to call another one, you actually use the name of your script, whatever that is, so create shape in this example, and put in parentheses afterwards. All right, so create shape is now being called in this block instead of in the drag and drop version. The other thing I need to do is, before I do this, is I need to set up some global variables. Um, what should I call this? Move one, block one, shape one. Let's see, how about block one? Global dot block three is a zero. Global dot global dot block four is a zero. And then I'm going to create that shape. So whenever you need a new variable, you can just say the name of the variable you want and give it a value, and GameMaker will create a new one for you. The key is you got to make sure that before you use a variable, you create it. So in this example, I'm creating these variables before I call create shape. And the reason why is in create shape, I'm going to use them. So now they've been created. And before each of these instance creates, I'm going to assign them to one of those variables. So global block one is equal to that particular object. So this doesn't change the effects of the game, but what it means is that now I can refer to them by, say, block one or block two. So let's, I'm going to test that real quick. So global dot block one dot y plus equals, I don't know, 64. So that should move that particular block down. Hey, look, there it is. So I picked out the one I wanted, moved it down. All right, so at this point, what I'm planning on doing is, is I'm going to go through and set up all of the different shapes. So I'm basically going to have another if statement here, which is otherwise, else if, shape is 1. Then I'm going to set up, let's see, maybe the line. Global dot block one's going to be. I'm a lazy typer, so I'm just going to copy and paste that. So I'm going to start this guy at 128 as well. Global block two is going to be this plus 32. Global dot block. Three is that. Only this should be 64. And this should be 64 plus 32 is 96. At the moment, shape is still 0. So if I want to see this work, I better change my testing thing to a 1. All right, there's a line. All right, see if you can put in all the different shapes.